pretty scared of the teams that uh, we have in LCS right now. I'm excited to, to see how we will do on LCS, and at the same time, it's my team, so it kind of motivates me to do as good as I can. And the new split will prove to be even harder, probably, with all these roster swaps. Uh, the whole element lo roster is changed. We tried something new last split and it didn't work out, so we just wanted to go back to like what we knew worked. Now that we have Forgiven in the team, he brings a really good bot lane and that's what we always wanted. The best roster change was Fnatic for me. Now they have a Reckless and it will fit them insanely well. Coming back to Fnatic feels like coming home again. to the European League Championship Series coming to you live from our studios in Berlin, Germany. We are about to kick off week one of the LCS Summer Split. And as you can see, our fans are absolutely ready to get things started as they were a little while ago as well. Some unicorns of love fans that we've grown accustomed to and there. Fnatic with a reckless in their ranks looking to get their first win on the board here in their very first game, which is versus Unicorns of Love. All familiar faces in that team setting up for game one. I'm Efeo Shogzapur, excited to be back at the analyst desk with Challenger Series shoutcaster James Stress O'Leary and two familiar faces returning to the LCS stage, Origens Expeke and Soaz. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> well, the fans are also very happy uh, to have you guys back. But the summer split begins today, and in 12 weeks, we will know the three European teams at World 2015. So let's go over the ways you can qualify for that World Championship. First off is, of course, getting the highest number of championship points over the season. And these are the spring standings showing where our teams are at right now. Yeah, so speaking of teams and where they're at, Fnatic right now are at the top of the table. 90 points already in the bank towards their World's qualification. And they earned those 90 points in the finals in Madrid against Unicorns of Love and man was that an exciting series to get all the way to five games one of the best series we've had as a finals here in Europe uh, following them in third place it's gonna be H2K though they've bagged themselves 50 points they took third after beating SK in Madrid uh, and then at the bottom side of the current table we've got the Copenhagen Wolves and Gambit each with 10 points yeah that's how it stands right now of course there's another round of championship points up for grabs this summer as well and then the two remaining spots for the world championship from Europe go to the winner of the summer split or whoever comes out victorious out of the regional qualifier that of course begs the question to the two gentlemen over here how do you get guys plan to get to world so as um world is not really a uh, it's a goal for us but we wanted to we want to do a good season first <coughs> and then see uh where, whether if we can go to world or not it's gonna be really difficult mm -hmm. but we hope that we can make it. All right, expect it. Well, the aim is that one pretty much to during the regular league. I don't think we have a high goal of ending first, second, third. The aim is to go, get to playoffs and then give everything we can to win playoffs. So obviously, it's going to be super hard, probably almost impossible. But if we made it, that, that would be the goal once we are there. Okay, to impossible give everything. is nothing <laughs> if you uh, dominate the Challenger Series. But before we move on, we have to touch on the mid-season Invitational, of course, as well in the off-season. LPL's Edward Gaming came out victorious after beating out SKT. But for me and for a lot of people in Europe, Fnatic's performance was really hopeful going into the rest of the season. Yeah, it was very inspiring, actually, for Europe as a region as a whole. Uh, we had a European team take a Korean team, a top Korean team, to five games again for Fnatic was super aggressive all throughout the tournament as soon as we got into the, the playoff stage. Uh, very in your face, very aggressive. It was exactly what they needed to do at MSI to uh, bag themselves a great spot. Yeah, and uh, you know, give us some bragging rights towards the other regions as well. Now, if you want to take another look at any of the action from MSI or the Spring Split, head over to lolesports.com. And while you're there, you can check out the new lineups across the LCS and scout out your fantasy LCS team for summer as well. And now, let's turn to today's slate of games where we'll start with a rematch of the Spring Split finals between the Unicorns of Love and Fnatic. Then Origen will make his LCS debut against Giants. The Copenhagen Wolves will face SK Gaming and will end the day as H2K takes on Rocket. So, there you have it, guys. Your uh, very first LCS game, although you guys have seen a few, is versus Giants. What are your expectations going into that match? Okay. Uh, it's, it's hard to tell because even though from screens we could say 
whatever we think because we think we will do good or whatever. We have never played them on LCS. None of the actual teams right now. And it's so weird because sometimes we practice a team and then we see them play on LCS and they play so different. Sometimes they play worse, sometimes they play better on scrims than they do. So it's like we cannot just get a bit too cocky and say, okay, we do good or we do bad against this team. Against this team. We have to see and just take care and more than aim for the win, aim to not make mistakes, to play a safe game and not fall into the like a lot of teams do on LCS against Unicorns a lot. Don't follow their game, follow their own game, don't play their way. And I think it's a super interesting matchup just for multiple reasons. I don't know whether all of our viewers will understand just how big a matchup this is in the region. When we were in Madrid, uh, there was Origin merchandise and there was Giants merchandise <laughs> everywhere. Everybody had a piece of one of the two teams. So this is massive. Uh, how much added pressure, if any, does that put on you guys, Soaz? Um, <coughs> it doesn't put so much pressure. I think it's mostly about uh, Mithy and uh, Peke because it's, it's a Spanish team. And they are two Spanish players, so I think it, this game is mostly going to be about mid lane matchup against Pepe and Peke, and it's going to determine how the game is going to go. No, we'll uh, don't worry, they will flame you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I bet you've missed that so much. Um, anyway, it's like they're always yeah. <laughs> taking another step back, maybe looking at the league, and you guys have gotten to sit back and look at the entire spring split and all the teams. So, as what has been your impression of the strength of the teams and being able, as you say, to get a good season and make it to playoffs, how feasible that is? Um, I think we can do it. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know really what to say, honestly. Mm -hmm. like, we just need to wait and see. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna see because, for example, this season compared to last ones, we have a lot less matches in uh, LCS, so um, we have we are gonna be we are gonna have to be more prepared for d during our scrims, uh, during our pre matches, and and things like this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're going to have to see during the season anyways. All right. Well, we will see indeed. I do have one final question. We need to get this out of the way. Origin. Origin. We all say it differently. Peke, tell us what to say. Well, both ways are fine. Okay. Origin is how you say it in Spanish. So you actually say like if you were a Spanish person, mm -hmm. but origin is how you would say it if you were not a Spanish but speaker. You say it exactly the same twice now. Origin. Origin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so See? that's it same. then. That's it then. And anyway, uh, well, good luck in that matchup as well. well. For us, before we kick it over to the casters for our first game of the day, we want to know what you think of the competition heading into the summer of 2015. So tweet at LL Esports and let us know who is your player to watch and why. A couple of my players to watch are right here on the desk. Stress, who are you keeping an eye on? Well, it's funny because my player to watch coming from the Challenger series is their teammate, Niels. He has never been on the LCS stage. He put up a great showing with you guys in Challenger. I'm excited to see how we can compete against the likes of Reckless and Forgiven. All right, then for you guys, is there anyone you're spe specifically looking out for that you haven't played before, or that you have played before? Well, um, for me, I'm mostly looking uh, for Fnatic with the with Reckless coming back to the team. I think it's a really great addition to for them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to, to play them because I, I think it's the strongest team right now. So, yeah, I would like to, to play against them in LCS and, and see what we can do. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, the, the same a bit. I was surprised when Reckless went back to the team, which makes it a, a lot more hype to play them again because it's, it's going to be more fun. They are super good and beating them will like be so so good feeling for us. <laughs> and even not, not beating them, it will be a really, uh, already nice to play against them and see. Especially something funny is to play against someone that you played with because it's, it feels so different when you play with people and then you play against them. You see stuff that they do that you didn't realize or that they didn't do. So it's, it's good to get a different point of view when you play against all teammates. Yeah, definitely going to be a hype matchup. Remember to send your responses in at LL Esports and include that hashtag LCS so we can talk over some of your answers later today. And now it's time to send it over to the desk for our first game of the split where the Unicorns of Love have a grudge to settle against the Spring Split champions. Crippo so handsome. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And as Pick has said, Crippo is so hot. My name's Quickshot. That's the fish, and we're joined by the newest member of the LCS and the hottest Shell member. Casting team. And Pick approved hottest member. Yeah, you know more feeding too. Like this is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so, guys. Summer split is about to start, and it's gonna be a rematch between the two spring finalists, Fnatic and the Unicorns of Love. 
We've been super fortunate in the summer split to have a couple of new guys join the team, including Crepo. We've had Spelzy joining to help us out on the stats side. And when we were looking at the teams to prepare for the split, yeah. one of the things we noticed is all of the early game aggression and just how impactful those kills and deaths were. So we've got some stats and some numbers prepared for you. And Deficio, why don't you kick us off? Well, so first of all, we looked at the first 15 minutes to so just look at the early game here for all the teams doing the regular split. So the first 18 games, we have the graphic now on screen. Notice here the first four teams for now Unicorns of Love, Gambit, and H2K. Three of those ended in the top three last split in the European LCS. It really showed how you were awarded for playing very aggressive in the early game and getting these kills here. Yeah, if you look at the bottom of the graph, you see teams like Copenhagen Wolves, Rocket, MYM, Elements, you know, it, it pretty much tells the story of the entire standings, and that was really interesting. So we decided to dig a little deeper, not only in the kills, but it matters how many kills you give away. So if you can get to the next graphic, there we see the team kills and deaths from 0 to 15 minutes. It'll come right in a second. And then we can really see how that evolves for the teams. And this is where separations are made, right? We see Fnatic being so efficient. The kill disparity is pretty big there. Whereas UOL, you guys said it last year in the Spring Split all the time. UOL, they play hyper-aggressive, but they have no break. They have no pause. It's rolling a dice. It's rolling a 50-50. Literally 50-50 if you look at the stats right here. And uh, yeah, H2K, objective-based gameplay. Yeah, it is the objective one where it's more about the towers for them and taking more the safe engages maybe, so they're not giving away as many kills. But then you look at Giants because people might wonder why they so far up the list when we are trying to say it's very good to get all these kills here. The problem for Giants is, yes, they get a lot of kills early on, but they give away even more to the other teams. So they seem to make too many mistakes. And that's why they ended up as one of the bottom teams. Okay, so we've taken a look at the kills, we've taken a look at the deaths, but what does this actually equate to in terms of game control, in terms of gold, in terms of leads? I know we've sort of stepped away from kills and deaths and started to take a look at uh, the gold differences between teams. Deficio, cue us up there. Yeah, so once again, we can just pull up the graphic. We're in the first 15 minutes and we try and, and see how much gold do you earn and how much gold does the other team earn when you play against them. And the funny thing is we didn't even mention SK Gaming yet despite them being number one in the in the last split. Forgiven style. Forgiven style. This is the 1-3-1, one, strong laning phase, push it in, get down these towers here, and just win due to farming way better and bully out the other team. It's not about the kill, so they give very little gold over to them, but so does H2K. Yeah, and you see in addition to that, Giants is giving away not even like kills and deaths, but they're, they're giving away more objectives too, and this shows that why they're getting so much more behind in these games, they lose a lot more gold. Yeah, and with Giants, we can say the same for Unicorns of Love, because we mentioned how they, they went even 50 15 kills. They don't get the towers. And if you look at both Fnatic and Unicorns, it's almost like we just swapped it around. Yeah, and then the one anomaly here that's not mentioned is Gambit. It shows, you know, they get more kills and deaths, they get added in gold, but somewhere along the line, it goes wrong with their shot calling. And let's see this season if they fix it. But going back to the point you made about UOL and Fnatic being pretty much mirrored, that's, that's going to be an exciting matchup then today. It is, and it is the opening matchup for the summer split. So let's take a look at the starting lineups to remind you guys at home exactly who's playing for who. On the blue side in this first matchup, it is the ever unpredictable Unicorns of Love. Vizachachi, Kikis, Power of Evil, Vardags, Hillisung, and Sheepy returning as the coach. And one thing that we did notice, Unicorns of Love went 2-0 against Fnatic in the regular split, lost eventually in the finals, but this is a team that shines in best of five yeah. because of that roll of the dice play style in some ways. It is, and it's the pick and ban phase as well. If you are the Unicorns of Love and you have these 50, 60 different champions per player almost <laughs> at this point, so when you try and prepare against them, it's so tough. Now for Fnatic, they had a few weeks after MSI. Obviously, they've been playing. They've had a lot of time to practice, but Unicorns, when they sit there, nobody watches what they're doing. I'm sure they're going to prepare so many different picks, so. and that's going to be tough for Fnatic now to figure out. I wonder if we're going to see another game of how low can the Nexus go? because it's always really exciting. But something that worries me is that I feel like UL may have hit their ceiling already. Whereas Fnatic, they added Reckless to their roster. They want to keep improving. They want to make sure that they not only were the, f the best team in Europe, they want to stay the best team and keep improving. And arguably with Reckless, they got a, got a better steal back, actually. Day one on the job and you're already queuing up the rosters. That's my job. Let's take a look <laughs> at the Fnatic team roster who will be on the red side. And as Krepo mentioned already, it is, of course, Reckless as the AD carry, Huni top, Rain over jungle, Feather in mid. Support is the captain and coach, uh, or captain rather, yellow star with coach Daylor. How well is Reckless going to play? That's the question. He joined Fnatic once before. 
You can argue the results. He's joined yeah. Fnatic again, and we've said multiple times, a better steelback. It is a better steelback, but it's also a player who takes or requires a lot more attention from his team. Reckless is not happy just being the, the janitor, the guy cleaning up. He wants to be one of the big carries. And again, we were looking at some of the farm here the teams get during the games. Reckless was number one on elements between 20 and 30 minutes. He got like 10% more than Froggen, the farming machine. <laughs> now he's on Fnatic where it's about Huni, it's about Febivan. We have to see how they, they fit in here with this second or third carry, honestly, from, well, from, from Reckless. But he is a great player, and, and under Yellowstar, I'm sure they can adapt to find a playstyle. But if we look at the raw CS numbers in lane, comparing to Steelback, uh, Reckless had a better record both at 10 and 20 yeah. minutes. So looking at the laning phase, that 2v2 should be stronger for Fnatic, but they have to learn how to play with that, right? They just need to make sure, need to make sure that Reckless goes out of that laning phase, joins the team for the mass skirmish-based style that Fnatic did a lot. And let's see if that translates. I completely agree, because watching 2v2s from Fnatic at Spring was not...